Greetings, Mr. Oaks here, today to explain to you how Julian Day, aka the Calendar Man, can be made into an A-list Batman villain. Calendar Man is, in my opinion, a very overlooked and underrated Batman villain, often considered to be a silly loser for some bizarre reason. And I never understand why. What's so silly about a guy whose gimmick is dates and holidays? I mean, how are they sillier than riddles and jokes and birds and cats and all that that we have in the Batman Rogues Gallery? I just don't get it. In my opinion, I really think that Calendar Man should be one of the big boys. I really think he could be. I mean, maybe not as big as the Joker, but up there with the likes of at least the Mad Hatter and Hugo Strange and Black Mask, at least. Oh, do you like my sweater, by the way? My Two-Face sweater? So, let's just get into it. How to make Calendar Man an A-list villain, in my opinion. Well, first of all, you really gotta change his visual design, because his visual design is very lacking. And I think a bad visual design can really hold back a character, especially when you look at the Batman villains. When you look at the big Batman villains like the Joker, Two-Face, the Riddler, the Scarecrow, Penguin, Catwoman, Poison Ivy, etc., they all have very unique, cool and memorable designs. But look at Calendar Man. Yeah, just look at him. And look at this Calendar Man. Look at that. Like, what is this? That's not really a very great and memorable design. But I think we have a lot of good stuff to work with here, actually. Like if you take this, this pale ball dude with the tattoos around his head, the names of the months, I think that's a good basic look for the character. But obviously, he also needs a good costume, and this just isn't really it. I mean, it's not a terrible costume, it's, it wouldn't be on my list of the worst comic book costumes of all time, it would not. But it's also not really that great, it's just serviceable, but nowhere, you know, up there with the costumes of the Riddler and Two-Face and Penguin, etc. It's just not. But I do really like the color scheme that he sports, red and white. I really think we should keep the red and white color scheme because that's very rare among Batman villains. I mean, no other Batman villain really has a red and white color scheme. In fact, just red in general is very rare among Batman villains. I can really only think of Harley Quinn at the top of my head who uses red as a color scheme. <clears throat> so yes, keep the color scheme but give them a better costume. Now a lot of Batman villains wear business suits but in very bright garish colors. So why not give Julian that? A suit. A red suit and tie. Uh, with a white shirt of course. And perhaps, you know, like the Riddler has question marks all over his suit, maybe we could give dates all over Julian's red suit. Like the uh, numbers, uh, 24th December, etc. You know, just a red suit covered in dates. Basically, you know, a red suit covered in numbers, in white letters. I think that could look pretty good and be pretty memorable and stand out, and it's certainly very Batman villainish. Or you could just do it on the tie. The tie, the red tie, could have a bunch of dates on it. And the suit is just plain red. So you take that suit and you give it to the bald, pale dude with the uh, date tattoos around his head. And there you have, in my opinion at least, a pretty great Calendar Man design that looks better and fits in a lot better in the Batman Rogues Gallery than this, you know. Now of course, a visual design is not everything, it's not enough to make a great character, it's just one part of it. So you obviously need to do more with Julian. Now one common thing I often see people complain about when they do complain about Calendar Man and argue why he's not really that great of a villain and why he doesn't even have potential to be a great villain is that he doesn't really have any motivations. He has no real character, no backstory. Like what is this guy's deal? Why is he so obsessed with dates? We've gotten motivations and origins for all the other Batman villains. We know why Riddler is so obsessed with riddles and all that. But we don't really know what drives Julian. 
Well, you would obviously have to give them motivations, give them a backstory, flesh them out, do this, and that way he would be a better villain. So you gotta actually do this, but no writer has really done that, not really. Calendar Man is still pretty much a blank. We don't really know who he is and why he does what he does. And I think we need to find that out. Now, I think I did, actually. <laughs> I don't want to blow my own horn too much, uh, but I think I did a pretty good job in the Arkham sessions, in my Calendar Man sessions. The origin and backstory I gave him, where he was basically a lonely dude who always spent holidays alone and he watched other people be happy on holidays and celebrate them together, you know, families and couples and all that, but he was always alone. So he grew to resent holidays, and that's why he commits crimes on holidays, because he hates them, and he doesn't want anyone else to enjoy them. He wants to ruin holidays for everyone else. Even though he doesn't necessarily know it is himself, he's not completely aware of this himself, and he kind of denies it, but that, that is what actually truly drives him. In my opinion, I think that's a really good explanation as to why he does what he does. Because why would a guy commit crimes on holidays? Crimes are an act of violence and it's something negative. So you need to explain that somehow. And also the fake origin that I presented in that session, the phony story that Calendar Man says to Dr. Arkham, I actually think that that could work as his real origin too. It is more melodramatic and over the top, but that can work as well. And that ordering was basically that he had gone through a lot of bad stuff in his life and it always happened to happen on holidays, different holidays. So that's why he became so obsessed with holidays and started to resent holidays. And of course, a lot of people have argued that Calendar Man shouldn't hate holidays and that he actually celebrates holidays by pulling off crimes. That's his bizarre way of celebrating. And that could work for a take on Calendar Man. However, it's a lot harder to explain. It's a lot harder to give motivations for. Why would a person celebrate holidays with crimes? It's trickier. So personally, I would avoid that. Now another idea I have for Calendar Man that could help them be a bigger threat is that he pulls off crimes on obscure holidays. We don't necessarily always have to have Calendar Man pulling off capers on Christmas and New Year's Eve and Valentine's Day and such, the big holidays. Basically every day of the year is a holiday somewhere. There's thousands if not millions of holidays. If we count all the holidays, all the holidays in all the world, all the country's holidays, all the weird one and obscure ones and all the ones that nobody even celebrates. There's so much to pick from and I think you should make Calendar Man so obsessed with holidays that he knows every single holiday that exists. He's such an expert on them. And not even Batman has all of this information, but Calendar Man does and he can pull off crimes related to all of these obscure holidays and on these dates that no one is expecting. You know, it's not gonna be on Christmas Eve. It's gonna be on some random date, seemingly random to everyone else, including Batman. And this makes his crimes a lot harder to anticipate and to prevent. And it makes it a lot harder for Batman to stop him because he doesn't really know what Julian is gonna do, when and where. He has to really do a lot of detective work to figure out how to stop him. I think they should start doing this with Calendar Man instead of just doing the old regular stuff. Because this way he would be a bigger threat and people would take him more seriously. And also it would, it would make for a lot of fun stories. <laughs> we would actually be educated and learn about all these obscure holidays. And for everyone who's saying, well, the writers doesn't know about these holidays. How can they write stories about them? Well, just research. It's so easy, just look on the internet. You can just find all the holidays there. There's information about every single obscure holiday. It's so easy. It's no problem with that. <clears throat> and finally, my final argument for how you can make Calendar Man into an A-list villain. 
just use him more. I mean, obviously, they use him very seldom. Just like every five years or something, they bring him up for some small one-shot story. Use him more often and use him in bigger stories. Use him for like a five-part arc in Detective Comics or Batman. You know, instead of just the odd, short one-shot in some anthology comic. Put him in longer stories. They don't necessarily have to be massive arcs that involve the entire DC Universe. But your regular five-parter, just put him in that. Every now and then at least. People see him more and he automatically becomes a bigger villain. And so there you have it. Those are my arguments for how you can make the Calendar Man an A-list Batman villain. Let me know down in the comments if you have any arguments of ways to make Calendar Man an A-list villain. And also let me know if you even want him to be an A-list villain. And if you don't, please explain why you don't think he should be, because I really don't understand it. And as always, remember, Arkham Asylum awaits you in the next video.